All right, happy Saturday, everybody. Engineering major, philosophy minor, back here to give you guys some more content pertaining to engineering, philosophy, politics, various other social and cultural issues. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be talking a little bit about firearms, and the reason we're talking about this is because I have seen a lot of articles that a federal judge in San Diego has overturned the assault weapons ban in California. Now, I came from San Diego in California before I moved out here to Utah, and so I had to adhere to a lot of the guidelines for you know assault weapons um, in California. So what I wanna do in this video today is I'm actually gonna show you my first AR-15 build, and we're gonna go through some of the regulations that were present in this assault weapons ban and we'll talk about how each of those regulations effectively impact the law-abiding recreational use or home defense firearm owner. Now what we'll find when we go through this is a lot of these measures in general tend to just make it more difficult for law-abiding citizens to obtain firearms that they might consider to be the, the best option for home defense or for recreational use. And the other thing we'll find is that a lot of these impose a significant cost burden on people. But before I get into that, I do want to mention one thing, and that is that apparently this month is Pride Month. You know, if you're LGBTQ, that's totally fine. But what I do want to mention is what better way to celebrate Pride Month than you as perhaps a member who supports the LGBTQ community, or maybe you are LGBT yourself, Maybe this is a good opportunity for you guys to go to the gun store and learn a little bit about firearms, especially if you're one of those people who's very concerned about what this federal judge ruled. Um, so, and you know, this doesn't apply to LGBTQ, obviously it's just Pride Month, that's why I mention it, but anyone really in California who is really, you know, fearful or upset or angered by the fact that this federal judge made this ruling, I encourage you guys to go out to your local FFL, um, your licensed firearm dealer, take a look at the firearms, ask questions, understand what is what, and really learn about this. And I hope that this video will also help give you guys some insight if you're really worried um, about kind of, you know, the implications for you. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the setup that I've got here. The first kind of imposition that happens with the assault weapons ban is this um, imposing a safe storage requirement for grandfathered firearms to keep them away from prohibited persons. So in California, there are some very strict storage laws. As you can see, I've got a hard case here. You know, I have four locks on this case. But this is kind of where the first aspect of the assault weapons ban factors into um, what the cost is for you to purchase a weapon. So the requirement in California is that you, with, with any firearm, not just assault weapons, quote unquote, with pistols, etc., you are required to either purchase a case where you can lock it in or you must purchase a cable lock, which there are requirements of where the cable lock needs to go around, but you have to take that off if you were to be in a situation where you want to use the firearm, either in recreation or in home defense, you have to go through and take all the locks off and everything like that. Now, to be perfectly honest, I don't know what the rules are in Utah um, specifically for this, but also in California, you are required to store ammunition in a separate place from your firearm. So. I want you guys to imagine yourself in a home defense situation, someone's trying to break in, and then you have to go and unlock your case, and then you have to go to a different spot to get your ammo. It's a, it's, it's a very difficult requirement to meet, especially in the heat of the moment. Um, and then of course, you're gonna have to deal with loading and things like that, which can complicate a home defense situation uh, quite a bit. So that said, that's maybe not necessarily particular to the assault weapons ban itself of 2013 or in the 80s or whatever, but still, it's something to, to consider about if you are a new gun owner or you are thinking about uh, owning a gun or you were gonna go to the shop, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, and uh, go ahead and learn a little bit more about this. Keep in mind that if you're in California, there's a lot of safe storage regulations and different places sometimes will tell you different things. They shouldn't be telling you different things, but it's just the way it is, depending on what person you get, depending on what their understanding is. So. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and then I'll show you guys the build. Okay guys, so I got the case open here and that uh, you know that takes a decent amount of time just taking all four of those locks off. 
Um, so, you know, again, if you're in a home defense situation, that's a little bit difficult. Um, but this is not this is not the firearm that I use for home defense. Um, this is just what I use for a recreational kind of long distance shooting. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and I just want to talk through, you know, what the build is. So for you gun enthusiasts out there, you'll, you know, this is my first build and you'll get an idea of what I put together here. It's not a very complicated setup. Again, it's the first one I did. Um, but in going through some of this stuff, um, people who were considering purchasing a firearm or if you're, you know, trying to celebrate Pride Month by going down to the local gun shop and learning, this might be a good um, way for you guys to learn about this a little bit. So let's go ahead and start at the front. So obviously this is the, this is the barrel right here. And this right here is the barrel guard and uh, hand guard. And there's a couple reasons to have this on here. Obviously you can mount attachments on here like a flashlight or you know you can you can get a forward iron sight instead of an optic um, but obviously this will keep your hand away from you know getting hot when you are, are gripping the weapon so this is a Bear Creek Arsenal um, 16 inch upper full upper assembly um, you can see right here that I, I chose to have a side charger um, and the reason for this was basically just because I thought it looked kind of cool um, the other type of charging handle you can have is a rear charging one, which goes back here. So this area right here, you can see there's one pin there, there's one pin there. That's how the upper assembly attaches to the lower assembly. So now we'll get into the lower assembly. This is a Spikes Tactical Lower. This is actually kind of an expensive lower, but there was a shortage of lowers and I really wanted to do an AR build. So I just decided to spend a little bit more money on this. If you are somebody who is new to firearms, the lower receiver right here is what's considered um, by the federal government the serialized part, meaning that you can, you can order this upper assembly and just have it shipped to your house, no problem, but you must get your lower, um, whether or not it's built out like this, from a licensed dealer and you have to go through the background check in order to purchase this. And the funny thing about it is um, you know, without any of this stuff attached, so you won't have this attached, you won't have this attached, and you may not even have a trigger guard down here, um, but it's really just a machine piece of aluminum. It doesn't have any springs in it, no pins in it, nothing like that, but you still have to get a background check just to buy a piece of machined aluminum or whatever material it is, so that's kind of interesting. So down here, this is obviously the magazine well. Um, here I have 30 round magazine. So this is what's gonna be referred to as a detachable magazine when we start getting into things. Um, I'll discuss that a little bit more. This obviously goes in here. It's got a dust cover on there, so that's why it's not gonna fit right now. There's actually, I think, rules in California, and you guys who are, you know, know more about this than me can correct me in the comments, but the chamfer right here, like the edge of the magazine well, um, in California, I believe you're not allowed to have this flange like flare out a little bit more. And the reason why you'd want that flange to flare out a little bit more is because then it's easier for you to get the magazine in there. If you're trying to do fast reloads for competition or in a situation where you need to do that, um, this is a pretty, um, this is a pretty like, uh, narrow flange. It doesn't stick out very much, and so it can be uh, a little bit more of a challenge to seat a new magazine in if you're trying to do reloads. So anyway, that's the lower. This is the upper. So this is up here is just a simple red dot optic. It's a Vortex Crossfire. It has no uh, magnification on there. So when somebody says optic or sight, they're referring to this up here, or you can have an iron sight. This right here is what's referred to as the pistol grip. This is a detachable piece here. There's actually a screw that's in here. You unscrew that, pop it out. Um, you can see here, there's a, this is the other side of the safety switch. Federal law is that you cannot have a fully automatic option on these. So if I go to try and flip the safety switch, I can't actually flip it into this position. And also the way the trigger's set up and everything, the gun cannot fire fully automatic. So it's a semi-automatic rifle, one trigger pull, one bullet, basically your rate of fire is gonna be completely limited by how fast you personally can pull the trigger. Now, some people can pull it really fast. Um, I'm, not, I'm not crazy good like that, but anyway. So this back here is your stock, and there's a little lever right here. So when people talk about adjustable stocks and bump stocks and things like that, if you're not familiar, this is not a bump stock. This is just a simple adjustable stock. 
There's nothing fancy about it. There's basically a pin when you press this down. So I'm gonna talk more about this in a little bit, but this is not, you know, this is just a normal stock. This is basically just so that you can get the correct distance from your shoulder to where you want your trigger finger to be and obviously where you want your foregrip to be. So that, that's pretty much the setup that you've got going on right here for an AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle. And then the last thing I'll mention before we start getting into the, the, some of the demonstration is I'm going to be picking this up and I'm gonna be handling the firearm and obviously we wanna be sure that it's completely unloaded. There's no magazine in here. And if I pull the bolt back, you can see that there is no ammunition in there. Now, for, for those of you who you know, might be a little bit worried about what happens when the assault weapons ban goes away, keep in mind that all the lawful you know, citizens who are owning a firearm around you know that there's an important procedure. You always wanna assume that the gun is loaded and, you, and just because there's not a magazine in there doesn't mean it's fully unloaded. You always wanna check the chamber right there. Make sure everybody around you can see you doing that so that you're, you know, everybody around you is verifying that it's unloaded. And obviously we're gonna make sure that we keep the weapon pointed in a safe direction, even though we verify that it's unloaded. So with that said, now let's go ahead and get into everything. All right, so I am reading from feinstein.senate.gov. I'll put the link in the description and also, you know, we'll be showing stuff on the screen here so you guys can see what it is. Um, this is the assault weapons ban of 2013. And I'm just gonna go straight to the what the bill does section. Um, and uh, we're gonna read through these and I'm gonna tell you how that impacts what this, what this setup looks like right here. So it says, legislation bans the sale, transfer, manufacturing, and importation of all semi-automatic rifles that can accept a detachable magazine and have at least one military feature that includes the, either a pistol grip, fore grip, folding, telescoping, or detachable stock, grenade launcher or rocket launcher, barrel shroud, or threaded barrel. So let's talk about what each of those things are. Now again, we made sure that the firearm was unloaded. There is, as you can see, there is no magazine in there right now. Just, just for good measure, we'll open that up. There's no round in there or anything. And uh, we'll keep the firearm pointed in a direction where it's not gonna, you know, if it was loaded, it's not gonna go through, you know, a wall or something and hurt somebody, even though it's completely unloaded. All semi-automatic rifles, so this is a semi-automatic rifle that can accept a detachable magazine, that's what this is, a detachable magazine, and have at least one military feature. So let's talk about what they consider a military feature. So the first one they list is the pistol grip. So technically, just by me having this grip on here, right here, that turns this into they classify this as an assault weapon in California. Now, in Utah, this is not considered an assault weapon. So, so what do you have to do about this grip if you are in California? Well, there's two options for that. One is you can either do a fixed grip option or a fixed magazine option. So if you go with the fixed, so I decided when I got this in California to go with the fixed grip option but let me talk about what the fixed magazine option is first. So let's say that I wanna have this style of grip in California. Well then what I need to do is I need to have a fixed magazine. What that means is I have my magazine, and by the way, this is illegal in California. This is a 30 round capacity, have some 10 round capacities right here, so you need to use 10 rounds. And then if you have a fixed magazine, if you want to reload, like let's say you're at the range and you're just, you know, doing some recreational shooting, trying to improve your grouping, whatever, sight in your, your, new, your new toy, what you would have to do is in order to reload, you'd actually have to remove these two pins right here and, and basically rotate the upper receiver off of the assembly. In fact, I can just do that really fast right here. So I'm gonna take out this uh, rear um, takedown pin, and I would have to do this, break the gun open, and then I can release the magazine and reload. And you can, as you, you can imagine, that's pretty annoying to do at the range. So you can either do that, or you have to buy an additional special grip like this. And you can see this grip right here has like this paddle on it right here. And the whole, and what you do is you take this grip off and you put this on. And so what you'd have is something that looks like 
this. I'm not, I'm not actually sure what the paddle is supposed to do, <laughs> honestly, but this is called a fixed grip setup. So when I had this in California, I did not have this grip on, I had this grip on. You know, weapon looked like this. Now I shoot left-handed, but if you were shooting right-handed, you know, which, which you'd be in a setup like this, your thumb, you usually activate the safety switch with your thumb, which is on the opposite side. If you have this paddle here, you cannot easily switch from safe to, to live unless you switch hands, basically. So you're shooting, you're shooting, you're out of ammo, bolt locks back. You wanna put the firearm on safe, gotta switch hands and come over here and do it, or you can do a weird reach around thing like this, but it just, it, it makes it really inconvenient and difficult to reload, essentially. In summary, basically what that federal judge ruled, um, having a setup like this um, in California would be completely lawful rather than illegal. Um, and again, what it was before is you either had to do the, you know, takedown thing in order to change the mag out, which is a fixed magazine option, or you had to have the paddle on here, which is what's known as a fixed grip option. I elected for the fixed grip because I think it's really fun to practice reloads and it's a lot easier to do reloads with, for me, especially because I'm left-handed, with the fixed grip as opposed to the, the uh, fixed mag. Last thing to note on this point is notice how that didn't change the functionality of the weapon at all. You know, really the only difference is how quickly you can do reloads or, you know, what your kind of gun ergonomics are. All right, so next thing on here is the forward grip. So remember, let's say that I had this set up with the paddle right here. Well, it says at least one military feature. So if I put the paddle on here, I cannot put a forward grip on here. So the, the way this would work if you were shooting is, you know, you'd be using your hand right, your, your forehand would be right here. Well, you've, you've probably seen there are some firearms that have another grip out here so that it's a little bit more ergonomic, a little bit more wieldy, um, and you can, you can really drive this back into your shoulder so that you can get, you know, good contact, good points of contact with the weapon. So in California, you cannot have a forward grip on, on here. It doesn't actually matter what you do with your mag or your grip or whatever, you just can't have a forward grip on here because that's considered then an assault weapon because you have a pistol style grip and then you have another quote unquote military feature. So you'd not be able to use that in California. Um, so obviously this rail right here has a number of slots. I could in Utah, I could attach a forward grip if I wanted, but not in California at least as long as this, uh, if this federal judge you know, completely gets his way, then uh, you would actually be able to install a foregrip in California, which I think would be kind of a cool thing because you could really customize your setup. Okay, next thing we get to is telescoping or detachable stock. So I was mentioning when I was showing you guys the setup down in here, this is technically a telescoping stock. If I am a person with longer arms, I can slide this to the back. If I'm a person with shorter arms, I can slide this to the front. And really all this controls is how far away from your shoulder the firearm actually is. I have mine set at about a medium. Again, I shoot left-handed, so it's like this. Um, I, I actually prefer it to be a little bit closer with where my trigger finger is. Um, that's just a little bit more comfortable, um, but Again, this feature right here does not at all affect the functionality of the, of the rifle, but because the pistol grip counts as a military style feature, and this counts as a military style feature, what you had to do in California was you actually had to buy another kit and you needed to take out the spring in here and make it so that this is completely fixed and you can't actually pull this lever. So let's say you were out shooting with some friends at the range, you guys are having a good time, and you're, you know, you're someone like me, you know, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, not super long arms, and then you have your buddy who's like 6'5", and he's got you know, really, really long arms, and he wants to adjust this. Well, in California, you, you would either just have to deal with it, or you'd have to completely disassemble this, like a couple pins in here, and then you'd, have, you'd be able to adjust the stock that way. Um, but again, does not affect the functionality of the firearm at all. So again, we're not talking about bump stocks or anything. We're simply just talking about being able to adjust this 
for you as a person was illegal in California and you had to buy a separate kit in order to modify an existing thing. So again, you can see in California, you had to buy this, you had to buy something out here. And so right, right away, you're spending, you know, probably an extra 40 or 50 bucks on modifications that you have to make in California. And by the way, if you're somebody who is a criminal, you're just gonna get whatever you can get on the black market. So really all the assault weapons ban did in this particular instance is just make it more challenging for law-abiding citizens to get a setup that they're comfortable with. All right guys, so we talked about the telescoping or detachable stock, then they say grenade launcher or rocket launcher. Um, obviously that would just be you know another expense even if it was legal, so probably no need to talk about that. But there is a threaded, threaded barrel. So what does a threaded barrel mean? It means that this up here is threaded so that I could replace this uh, flash hider right here with say a suppressor or a silencer. That um, is illegal in California. So again, that counts as what's considered a military style feature, making it an assault weapon. So in California, you must use uh, an unsuppressed weapon. Now, obviously, if you're using this for home defense, even suppressors are still going to be like pretty loud. But obviously, if you're using this for home defense, you're in, you're in maybe some tight quarters, a closed off room, and you don't have a supp suppressor on here, it's going to hurt your ears. Now, you're not going to go running for ear protection if someone's breaking into your house. So um, again, if, the, if this judge ruling goes goes well, then you will actually be able to put suppressors on there. I believe in Utah. I mean, y Utah is very gun friendly, so you can, you can almost pretty much do whatever you want except have fully automatic weapons, which if I'm not mistaken, you guys can correct me, was the original definition of like what a military style assault weapon was until all the Democrats basically started adding on all these other things. So the next one, all semi-automatic rifles and handguns that have a fixed magazine with the, compa with the capacity to accept more than 10 rounds. So this is really a magazine limitation requirement in California. So for my home, for my home defense weapon, which this is not, but out here in Utah, you can get a 16 round capacity um, or even a, I think up to a 20 round capacity that company makes for that particular weapon. But in California, you are restricted to only 10 rounds. That's not really a big deal for a handgun. But obviously, in, in my personal opinion, let's go ahead and look at you know the 30, 30 round capacity versus the 10 round capacity. You can see there's a significant difference. And if I am to put this in here, this is completely unloaded. If I was to put this in here, obviously, I just think that this looks a little bit cooler. Um, but honestly, if I'm at the range, I'll probably, I usually only use the 10 round capacity so that I'm not like blowing through ammo really quickly. Um, but you know, if I was out recreationally shooting with some friends or you know, I uh, was in a situation you know, where I needed to use this for home defense or something like that, for whatever reason, I would definitely be using the higher capacity magazines. Um, so apparently right now that's gonna be legal in California. So then in this website, they're gonna talk about a bunch of exceptions. I think that I've gone through enough detail in this videos, but essentially, you know, in California, the current assault weapons ban, which is under challenge, essentially just requires the, you know, legal law-abiding firearm owner to make a number of costly modifications to their, to their weapon without changing any functionality of the firearm. And of course, one thing I didn't talk about yet in this video is the cost of obtaining a firearm safety certificate, um, the 10 day waiting period, um, pending, you know, your back, pending your background check, um, the strange law that like I could go in and I could buy like, you know, 10 of these, but only one handgun. And then again, certain things not be, being available in California, which, you know, maybe have only one of these other quote unquote military style features that they're actually cheaper options and better options for home defense. You know, you, you can imagine using this for home defense is a little bit crazy because it's just, it's, it's very long. Um, it's, you know, if you need to go around corners and stuff like that, you need to do a lot of gun manipulation. It's a lot heavier. It is a lot more accurate than a handgun for sure and probably easier to aim, but um, depending on the size of home that you live in, this is, you know, an AR style rifle is probably not 
the best situation, but you know, if, if you're hunting, if you're recreational shooting, target shooting, training for competition, etc., um, you know, the, the AR is like a really awesome platform and it's a really fun thing to build. So guys, in general, I actually think that getting rid of this assault weapons ban is a really good idea because as we went through in this video, it really the only thing that the assault weapons ban does is make it more challenging for law abiding citizens to get a setup for, you know, recreational shooting, hunting, home defense, etc. It makes it more difficult for them to get a setup that they're actually comfortable with. Um, and again, a lot of these modifications that were required for semi-automatic rifles in California really don't change the functionality or the quote unquote, you know, uh, deadliness or danger of the weapon itself entirely. You know, in my opinion, really the most important thing is if you are worried or if you're scared or you've never handled firearms before, you know, I really encourage you to go out to your licensed firearms dealer, ask them questions. They're gonna treat you nicely. They're not crazy. Um, you know, these places are not, you know, dens of crime like some of the inner cities that we see. Um, and again, you can put all these regulations on, you know, average, average law-abiding citizens, but I mean, do, do you think that a criminal who's interested in buying an AR-15 is gonna also go out and buy this and stick it on there before they go commit a crime? You know, I mean, no, that's ridiculous. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed taking a look at this. I hope that you guys learned something about firearms, how, how they work, what some of the nomenclature is going through all this, what some of the things are called and how they affect the functionality. And if you are a 2A enthusiast, I hope, and you know a lot more about this than me, I hope that I didn't say anything that makes you completely cringe. Um, but I think for the most part, the information in this video is relatively accurate. But of course, if you guys disagree um, or you guys have something to say, please leave a comment below. And I especially wanna, you know, I, I wanna keep harping on the message to con conservatives, people who are pro Second Amendment, who are um, really worried about the rights getting taken away. Um, please leave a comment below. And that's not so that, you know, I can just get more comments and I can get more views. It's so that we can all understand that there are a community of people out here who are supportive of our rights granted by the Constitution there and we need to get better about vocalizing what our desires are what we think is you know good legislation what we think is bad legislation um and you know don't be afraid to talk about some of this stuff so anyway with that i'm going to go ahead and conclude the video thanks guys so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one